there's a revolution coming. In fact, in many ways, it's already begun. In towns across America, and in this case, around the world, plans have been drawn, decisions have been made, and now billions of dollars have been spent. And this revolution will have a profound effect on all our lives. It'll also have a profound effect on future generations. It'll even have a profound effect on our wallets. Because this revolution is centered around the most basic element of all life on this planet. All animal life, all plant life. Carbon. I think a good place to begin any discussion about a carbon revolution is around one of the greatest gifts this planet has ever given us. Liquid gold. Oil. Oil has transformed the way we live every day. Of course, it's the way we get to school. It's the way we get food to our homes. It's the way we get to work. But it's also made this globe a lot smaller in a good way through transportation. Oil is also the way we get all the food to our table. It's the way farmers harvest and, in fact, bring all the food to market. In fact, in 2011, the United States Department of Agriculture estimated that up to 27% of the cost of fresh vegetables on our table is really the liquid transportation fuels that got them there. But oil isn't just focused on fuel. Oil's all around us all day long in product derivatives. Oil's in our cell phones. It's in our laptops, our household cleaners, our detergents. Oils in virtually every beverage bottle we consume. These bottles are made from plastic derived from petroleum. So our water bottles, our sports drinks, even the inside linings of beer cans and soda cans. But oil goes beyond that. It's in nylon, carpets, pharmaceuticals, paints, polyurethanes, even the coatings of the wood next to us. Oils in Dacron, Rayon, our clothing, our sporting goods, our vehicles clothing we wear, even the cosmetics we use. Now, the petroleum industry calls the type of oil that we use in virtually all these products light, sweet, crude. And that's to differentiate it from other types of oils. But I think in many ways it's a misnomer. It's not light, it's not sweet, and yet it certainly can be crude. We're pumping 200 million year old carbon into the atmosphere at an unprecedented rate. My 13 year old son asked me a few months ago, he said, Dad, why are people willing to go to war over oil to protect it? And so we talked about all the great things that oil has done and how pervasive it's become in our lives and how important it is to our society worldwide. We also talked about how incredibly scarce it is here are the known oil reserves in 2010. No matter what, we are running out of oil. In fact, if you look at the price of a barrel of oil in the last 10 years, a lot of people are surprised. It's gone up 500%, from a little over $20 a barrel in 2002 to hovering at or above $100 a barrel for the last three years. And the direction is clearly nowhere but up. So what is it in a barrel of oil that is so critical? It's this element. Again, the basis for all life on the planet, carbon. Unfortunately, from a barrel of oil, the vast majority of that carbon is burned, and we're adding it to the atmosphere, to the carbon that's already currently in the atmosphere. Only about six gallons out of the current 44 gallons in a refined barrel actually go to all those other products we use every single day. But what if modern chemistry could allow us to use current carbon, carbon that's already in the atmosphere, instead of having to add 200 million year old carbon every single day? What if, as the Department of Energy suggested last year, we could find a way to replace the whole barrel, all those products coming from current carbon? We're all already participating in this carbon revolution with this product in the United States in particular, and in Brazil. Ethanol. Ethanol, in this case, derived from corn. Now, the great news about corn-based ethanol is that it works. 
Those of us who drove here, about 10% of our fuel tanks were corn ethanol. People have been fermenting it for thousands of years into beverages as well. But unfortunately, the negative side of corn ethanol is that the corn used for that fuel comes from food, food for animals and food for people. And it's not sustainable from a carbon usage standpoint either, in terms of the amount of diesel required to get that corn ethanol into our tanks. And the land use issues are substantial. What if there were a way for all those green products to be truly green using current carbon, our laptops, our detergents? What if, as Coca -Cola, the Coca-Cola company is doing today, we could take Dasani water bottles and Heinz ketchup bottles and make them up to 30% from plant materials, plants that are taking carbon from the current atmosphere, not 200 million year old carbon. If you walk down the grocer's aisle, you see that plant bottle logo. That's what Coca-Cola is doing today. So we're already participating in this. And Coca-Cola is a great company, and they are oriented toward a green society. But frankly, they're all about green on the bottom line as well, because it economically makes sense now with $100 a barrel oil to do this economically. What if you could also take this carbon and create plastic bottles that instead of these bottles degrading back to carbon over 600 years as the current petroleum-based plastic bottles and water bottles over a billion a day into landfills right now, what if they could degrade back to carbon in six months, but they would last just as long as a petroleum-based bottle on your shelf or in your refrigerator? There have been tremendous breakthroughs over the last 10 years in particular. Now, instead of using food, we can begin to use agricultural residues, wastes, things that the farmers leave behind, something called corn stover, which is what's left over after corn is harvested. In fact, over the last few years, last decade in particular, there's too much corn stover for these farmers because of modern farming practices. So they're having to remove part of it before they plant. They're burning it or they're landfilling it. But wheat straw is a similar product. It's left over after the wheat is harvested. Sugarcane bagasse, after the sugar is extracted, burned typically right now. These are waste products. Wood chips from lumbering operations and sawmills. We're using energy crops as well. We planted 500 acres here in western New York last year of a sorghum, which is what you get molasses from. It grew to 14 feet tall through a drought twice the height of corn on nearby acreage, and it grew on land that was unsuitable for corn, unsuitable for crops. We can even use separated trash, organic wastes from municipal solid wastes, and lawn clippings. How are we doing this? Modern chemistry. This is brand new, and yet we're commercializing this this year. We're working together with folks here in the US and in Denmark and our own scientists to make certain that we can use modern carbon to make sugar the new oil. We're using a thermochemical process, which just means heat and mild chemicals that are environmentally safe and contained. In fact, we don't have emissions. We're filing for permits around the United States right now, and we're doing very well with the permitting agencies because the process is so gentle and so friendly to the current environments around those plants. We're using another process secondarily called enzymatic hydrolysis, which sounds like a big deal, and it is, but we're using just enzymes, like the ones we all have in our digestive systems, to break down this cellulose material, these wood wastes and these agricultural wastes, into a highly fermentable sugar that can be made into fuels, chemicals, and plastics. But not petroleum-based fuels, chemicals, and plastics, biofuels, biochemicals, bioplastics. And we create a sweet water, a sugar water, to do that. The side product, the co-product, is what's called lignin. It's what helps trees stand up. And we're burning that currently in a closed environment to create heat for the process so we don't have to use quite as much, much energy. But we're working with scientists now around the world who think there are many uses for this product because we have a clean form of lignin. All the way from the medical profession to carbon fiber can be created from this carbon too. This, this lignin, all the way to oil absorbents to be used in Gulf oil spills. This is a satellite image of a town just outside Rochester, a beautiful town called Hilton, New York, up on Lake Ontario. 
And the wise people of Hilton, which is part of the larger town of Parma, and the surrounding towns of Spencer Port and Hamlin, got together a few years ago and recognized they had a tremendous set of assets, the farmland that surrounds the center of town. And so they passed a farm and agricultural protection plan in 2009. And we're working with towns like this just across America, and one in Wisconsin, one in Colorado, and even here in New York State. And we're working with the farmers locally to use their agricultural wastes that are a problem for them now, and we're paying them for those agricultural wastes. And we're, we're reinventing towns. So the folks in Hilton could take a step forward and have Hilton 2.0. They could literally reinvent their economy, have a greener economy for the environment, and a much greener economy for their wallets. Because they could place facilities that convert those ag wastes into sugars and export those sugars for biochemicals or biofuels. But they could take it a step further. They could even put a biorefinery. There are already two in New York State, one just west of Hilton in Medina, and one east of Hilton in Fulton, New York. They're currently making biofuels, corn ethanol, there's no reason the folks in Hilton couldn't even own a portion of or co-op with a biorefinery that's making biofuels, biochemicals, and bioplastics. So if the folks in Hilton and other towns across the United States and around the world got together, they can take these ag wastes using current carbon out of the atmosphere today instead of 200 million year old carbon. They can create biochemicals, bioplastics, and biofuels. And if they wanted to, they could even co-op with that refinery, and instead of driving with $12 gasoline 10 years from now, they could drive with $2 gasoline, plus all the high-tech jobs that they'd have in their community and the tax dollars without raising taxes. I think that's green in the wallet as well as green for the environment. And this isn't five years away, this isn't three years away, this is this year. So if we work together, the future doesn't need to be based on light, sweet, crude. If we use sugar as the new oil, it'll just be sweet. <laughs>